Good morning and welcome to Monday. I'm Joe Jaquin, CEO of the Patriot Trading Group. And uh, as I warned you Friday, you never know what's going to happen uh, over the weekends anymore. Obviously, uh, the strikes in Saudi Arabia against the world, the largest oil producing center, uh, over 5 million barrels of crude oil offline. The blame game has started. Uh, where did it come from? Who launched the attacks? Who's responsible? Is World War Three coming next? How high is oil going to go? What's it going to do to the economy? And what's it going to do to gold and silver? I'm going to try to answer all of those questions and so much more. 800-951- 0592. That is our toll-free number. You know the number. And I keep telling you, right, you're going to call. Just how much are you going to pay when you do? Uh, call sooner rather than later if you want to pay less. The website at allamericangold.com. So let me bring you up to speed. Over the weekend, a and I'm going to say an alleged drone strike. And I'll, I'll get to the why I'm saying alleged in a minute. Ten different strikes in the oil refining center as well as the oil field next to the refining center uh, was conducted by Yemen rebels. It's like a multiple choice. Right, Yemen rebels, Iraqi Sunni paramilitary bad actors. By the way, both of those backed by Iran and or Iran itself. And of course, uh, the Yemeni group, the Yemen group is taking responsibility. They're like, hey, we did it. And oh, by the way, they, they not only did they say they did it, they said, and we're going to do it again, and we can reach anywhere into Saudi Arabia. Now, of course, uh, our position is they didn't do it. They, they don't have that capability, and more importantly, they want us to believe that we would have discovered it. In other words... It's not possible that they launched these drones and Saudi radar didn't pick them up, right? Because it would have had to have traveled uh, quite a ways into Saudi Arabian territory. And they're saying, therefore, ergo, it must have come out of Iraq or Iran, which came over the water uh, and into uh, the facilities. Uh, and everybody was speculating. Here's what we really care about. And in, 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 in regards to the price, and in regards to gold and to silver, how long is this facility going to be down? In other words, how accurate were these strikes? Did they hit... Um, fuel lines right which in that case not that it's you know I don't want to make it sound like it's a piece of cake or anything but once you shut off the oil get the fires out uh, if they were just the lines where the uh, uh, crude oil was being pumped you know pumped through those are pretty easily replaced and there's a lot of uh, spare tubing you know, because these things leak and and there's always maintenance and, you know, you take out the bad section of pipe and you replace it with a new section of pipe and, and maybe it's down for a week. Maybe it's down 10 days. Or did they hit things much more important? Did they hit targets in within these facilities that, hey, that's not like a part, right? You know, you don't go to the uh, <laughs> to the parts store and replace. 
like, hey, uh, we, we're going to have to manufacture that thing uh, from scratch, right? Which that, that may be down, may mean that it's down for months. If it's down for months, you're going to see crude oil. I don't know. You know, I don't. Could be a hundred, uh, at least. How about seventy-five to a hundred, depending on how long it's down. If it's down for weeks, uh, then then I think you'll see it top out, maybe at sixty-five. But at least what I've heard early on, the strikes were pretty accurate. They they the this may be. Uh, one of, on the worst side scenario. In other words, hey, some of this stuff, right, you just can't go to the parts store and get, and, and it may be down for longer. But back to breaking news, uh, the, Saudi Arabia is now saying that they have proof that the strikes originated on Iranian soil. So this is a a major update here. They're saying that they can prove it. Uh, when we get back, I'm going to tell you what it, exactly they're saying. Uh, but obviously this changes things now. If, if they're going to say that Iran was behind it, but it wasn't on Iranian soil, it's one thing. But saying, hey, Iran was behind it and they launched it from Iran itself, do we have a new Mideast war getting ready to break out? I'll tell you about that next. 800-951-0592. Protect yourself against the unexpected. Amongst a whole lot of other things when you buy gold and silver. Before I get to the story, I want to remind all of you my brother who's you know most of you know he's a colonel in the army and the last time i saw him we were talking about uh, air defense and he had said hey you know the only way to shoot stuff down because you know we see that all the time right there oh yeah we got the patriot missiles and this and that and, and all that stuff the the vehicle used to shoot down or intercept has to be pointed in the right direction. Okay? And you know, essentially the 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 target, you know, has to essentially fly in the flight path that, you know, they're looking for. And I'm just wondering because they're so adamant all weekend long that there's no way it could have come from Yemen. Which kind of made me think about my brother, thinking, hey, wait a minute, we had all our stuff pointed at those guys. <laughs> because they've tried to do this before. And we were, they weren't pointed from it coming from Iraq or Iran. That's just my guess. Now, whether that's true or not, I have no idea. But now, things have changed as of the last 45 minutes. U.S. officials have now told Fox and others that the attacks originated from Iranian soil the first time such, such a direct charge has been issued. Right now, again, they, they said there were three possibilities. The rebels in Yemen, which they said, hey, they can't do it. Which leads me to believe, hey, we were watching those guys and we would have shot these things down. So it had to have come from Iraq or Iran. Now, of course, admitting that they came from Iraq, that'd be bad for us. Right? You know, I, I think back to the weapons of mass destruction that Iraq allegedly had. Uh, 9-11, that guy in the cave, if he was actually ever really in a cave, right, he was the guy that orchestrated it all. And, and uh, you know, the, the fire from the jet fuel took down the buildings, even though every architect, engineer, and scientist said that it's not possible. Right now we got to believe all of this stuff. 
It says that it, while the narrative is rapidly changing, Saudi Arabia, obviously them and Iran, they're enemies, said Monday that Iranian weapons were behind the attack based on initial in the initial investigation. However, just 45 minutes ago, they went a step further and said that they will be producing photos providing the U.S. Saudi position which points the finger at Iran. And they said that the, uh, the whole thing originated on Iranian soil. So after Trump on the weekend... Uh, put the ball squarely in the Saudis' court, right, saying that we're waiting to hear from Saudi Arabia. Apparently, the Saudis have responded, confirming not only were Iranian weapons used, but they're saying that uh, direct cruise missiles or drone attacks actually came from Iran. So now they're saying, hey, it may not even been drones. Right? They 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 it could have been they could have now could they have launched cruise missiles uh without a drone? Yes. Could they put the cruise missile on a drone? Yes. Uh again, I don't know. Uh but they're saying that uh now they're saying that it came from Iranian soil, which means I guess right when obviously I mean let's Let's put one plus one together. Right now, that gives us justification to do what? Right now, that gives us justification to bomb Iran. It, you know what? If Saudi Arabia wants to bomb Iran, that's Saudi Arabia's business. I mean, that's kind of my feeling on this whole thing. I think we should stay out of it, right? And let the Saudis and the Iran- Iranians handle it. But here's the problem. You know, since we went into Iraq, all the all the weapons that got dumped in there, uh, Syria and all the weapons that got dumped in there. I mean, my guess is the whole Middle East is just a smorgasbord of all kinds of weapons, right? You know, I, I sit there and I talk about, well, the oil facility, if they bomb the wrong thing, right, they just can't go to the parts store and replace it, and this facility could be down for months. Or, hey, did they just hit pipelines, which the pipelines, right, we can get those fixed relatively quickly. The same kind of a thing with all the weapons out there. I mean, are there cruise missiles and drones laying around? Probably. Probably just laying around out there. Hey, I'm I'm going to the, honey, where are you going? Well, first I'm going to go to the drawing store. Uh, Then after that, I'm going to go over to the cruise missile place. Uh, and then I got to get some rounds for my AK-47, and uh, I'm going to get a couple of uh, grenades and a couple of mines too. But I'll be back. I'll be back before dark. Don't worry. I mean, <laughs> crazy when you think about it. And and you know, I was reading about apparently in Iraq. Right, and we don't hear a lot about Iraq anymore. Uh, but from what I what I what I do hear, or- Iran controls Iraq. Right? And again, we probably should have left. The best deterrent for Iran was Saddam Hussein. Right? Those two kept each other so busy, bombing each other and fighting each other, they really didn't have time to do anything else. Of course, now Iran's got, apparently Iran's got a lot of time to do a bunch of stuff. But what, what, what they're saying is, and this was uh, the, from the Wall Street Journal, that there are these paramilitary uh, fighters inside of Iraq uh, that are loyal to Iran and that they would have the ability to actually launch these strikes from Iranians or from Iraqi soil. Uh, but, But again, I think now the Saudis have said, nope, the Iranians did it and we're gonna, I haven't seen pictures. They said they're gonna Put out the pictures. I haven't seen them yet. Uh, but but again, uh, they're now saying it did not come from Iraq. It did not come from Yemen. Uh, the attacks themselves actually came within Iran itself. Uh, that, that means, I think, two things. 
and, and maybe I'm reaching here, but I'm just trying to uh, put this all together. Number one, I think these attacks on this facility were bad. Right? I don't. I don't think we're going to get out of this the easy way. Where hey, in a week or two, uh, we're going to have it solved, and the production will be back online, and no need to say escalate this even further. So that's number one. Kind of like okay, if they want, and now, now we're talking escalating this thing. Uh, my guess is these attacks weren't good. In other words, they hit some some things that we rather wish they had hadn't have hit. And then number two in, in all of this, I think we're going to see uh, significantly higher uh, oil prices in, in and for a lot longer than we would like. And and again, a potential for all out war now here in the Middle East, which you know. I don't know what that solves at all, but but get ready. I, I you know uh, it could be good for Trump re-election, right? Usually, if you're in a war, right, you get re-elected. So I'm not saying that that's the Trump strategy by any means, uh, but I'm just pointing this out. The other big news of the day today: United Auto Workers began a nationwide strike on General Motors. 46,000 members walking off the job after contract talks hit an impasse. Here we go again. By the way, uh, Chicago teachers uh, getting ready to strike as well. And again, this is all the same thing. I get it. You know, and I don't like strikes. I don't. Uh, do I think unions have been greedy in the past? Yep. Especially the UAW, right? All of their top leadership, right, is either under investigation or has been arrested for taking kickbacks and bribes and all that dirty stuff that goes along with it. Well, the average guy out there is getting it, you know, taking it in the shorts. Listen, they can say there's no inflation, right? They can say it day in and day out. Doesn't mean it's true. And so when you sit there and you think about 46,000 auto workers striking, right? why are they striking? Well, because, hey, we, we want to try to stay in the middle class. Uh, we want you to promise not to send our jobs overseas. Right? They get it. They know. right? They, and again, I think this is a great indication that the workers inside General Motors don't think General Motors or Ford or Chrysler, really any of them, are done having jobs leave America, right? And 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 how could now now really really unfortunately right it makes it worse. Already the American worker isn't as competitive as you know Mexico they pay two bucks two fifty, right? China it's like fifty cents right? But uh, but neither here nor there, right? They want. More guarantees, more health benefits, more this, more that. One of the things in there, uh, the UAW, they pay 3% of their pay to health care. Uh, according to the, the article, this was, uh, uh, this article, I think it was out of the uh, USA Today. But they said that the average worker in the United States, that 28% of pay goes to health care. Wow. I'm thinking, how, how can you sit there and say uh, that that there, there's no inflation out there? But I get it. Listen, I get all sides. You know, and I, it goes back to the speech Richard Nixon gave in 1971, right? As soon as Americans stopped buying American, the end of the dollar was written. And and this is where we're headed. We got runaway deficits. Nobody cares. We got runaway entitlements. Nobody cares. We got World War Three brewing. We got the you know what we'll call trade wars brewing. We got bond bubbles, equity bubbles, right? We got negative yielding rates. The president uh, again hammering the central bank. The president just tweeted tweeted out buy gold, buy gold, buy gold this morning, talking about the Federal Reserve. 
meaning more rate cuts. They got to wake up. They're clueless, right? They got to join the game that's being played by everybody else and the devaluation and all of these things. And all of it, though, really, I think, is for one major goal, right? Electronic money is coming. And you should be worried, very worried. Because not only will it take away our freedoms, but more importantly, it puts the power solely in the hands of the bank. They have absolute power now. Right? No more cash, right? No more having uh, money in your vaults. And, and, of course, let's face it, all the money you have out there that you need to put into the bank, because you know how this works, right? They're going to pick a day. Now, when's this coming? Three years? Five years? My guess is less than ten years. We're going to have it here. We'll talk about that next. And don't miss them. This is the Phyllis Schlafly Report, a daily look at the significant issues of our time from an experienced conservative perspective. Sponsored by Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, this broadcast continues the legacy of Phyllis Schlafly and stands against forces that mock traditional values, slander America, and redefine the family. Now the president of Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, Ed Martin. You won't hear it on the evening news, but President Trump is winning for America every day. Do you remember back during the 2016 race when Trump dramatically said, we're going to win so much you're going to get tired of winning? I know I'm not tired of winning yet, and Trump will have another five and a half years to fulfill that campaign promise. In the meantime, let's talk about some of his biggest recent wins that you aren't going to hear about from the mainstream media. First, President Trump issued an executive order requiring federal agencies to increase their purchases of products that are made in America. Using his authority under the Buy American Act, Trump commanded agencies to increase their purchase of American-made goods from 50 to 75 percent. Purchases of domestic steel and iron products will increase to 95 percent under Trump's command. As our infrastructure is rebuilt, this will give an important boost to our American manufacturers. At the same time, the Trump administration took action to sharply limit the flow of illegal aliens who seek asylum by crossing our southern border. In response to an explosion of applications, the Department of Justice issued a new rule to prohibit applications for asylum by someone who has migrated through another safe country. That means migrants can't leave a dangerous nation like Guatemala or Honduras, travel through Mexico, and settle in America. That idea isn't original with Trump. It's the standard throughout the international community and international law. And it's purely common sense, not racism. As always, it's worth mentioning the perennial Trump win of his total command of the national narrative. From throwing down with the radical leftist squad of representatives to calling out rat-infested Baltimore for bad Democrat leadership, it's clear that Trump, and only Trump, decides what the American people want to talk about. Trump keeps the conversation headed in a pro-America direction. These are all necessary steps to restore American sovereignty and jobs for our American citizens. And don't be shamed into silence when it comes to defending the president. We have every right to celebrate these Trump wins. This has been the Phyllis Schlafly Report from Phyllis Schlafly Eagles. As President Trump fulfills his campaign promises, his accomplishments on trade, immigration, the economy, and protecting the unborn should be celebrated, not ignored or diminished. To track these victories, go to phyllisschlafly.com and find out what's next for the Trump presidency at phyllisschlafly.com. Thanks for listening to the Phyllis Schlafly Report. We're back, 800-951-0592. U.S. $20 Liberties and Saints at $1,600. Rolls of U.S. Silver Eagles at four hundred and thirty. dollars Five dollars, right? So you've, there's, that's a ten dollar increase on gold. That's a, a ten dollar increase in rolls of silver eagles from Friday. Uh, silver dimes, rolls of silver dimes, fifty dimes in a roll. I still got them on sale at seventy, so I left that price alone. Uh, looking really, really attractive. Eight hundred nine five one. 
0592. And again, we live in a headline, right? Everything's a headline. The oil field strike, right? The 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 drone strike, the strike at General Motors. All you know, eventually it'll get resolved. Is there going to be war with Iran? I hope not. Starting to look like that's where they want to go. But again, even that, right? The bigger picture of things. Where are we going? Financially, look at the world. I mean, Japan's going to lower rates again. We're lowering rates. So we'll lower rates on Wednesday. Japan's going to lower rates on Thursday. Europe lowered rates last week. Further into negative territory. Now Europe at negative 50 basis points. We got, I don't even know the number, 17, 18, 19 trillion dollars worth of debt trading at negative rates. Uh, we just admitted that the first 11 months of the year, the small number is over a trillion dollars of debt. Uh, Social Security and Medicare are just blowing up. And remember, 2022, it gets bigger. And we take another big jump in those uh, and, and rapidly uh, depleting, you know, the trust fund, the non-existent trust fund, it really doesn't matter. And you have everybody, even the CBO, uh, we're going to be running trillion dollar deficits for the, you know, forever, uh, and then it's going to go to two trillion, three trillion. Uh, no one even talks about it, you know, is this oil shock going to gonna help things? No. Right? I mean, already, I think the best we could say is we're not uh, as worse off as, say, Europe or Japan. But we're, you know, we're, it's not like we're doing great. But how long do you really think we have? How long? Right? St- Steve Mnuchin last week. Hey, we're going to start selling 50-year bonds, right? <laughs> hey, we can't keep adding to all the bonds, right? Now, now we're just... The, the bond offerings have gotten so big. Now we got to come up with even new bonds. And now, hey, 50 year bonds, 100 year bonds, right? All the, I mean, it's comical. But this is the plan. Like I said, if I'm talking about it, they've already done it and, and, and beyond, right? And we're talking about rates that after Wednesday are going to be what, 175? Well, what's between one seven five and two percent? Nobody gets paid that saved money. You know, you think about how much they pretend that they want us to save. Oh, we need to save more. We need to save. You want people to save? Get the interest rate. Give us seven, eight, nine percent. We'll save. Right? Give us nothing. Yeah. Well, what's the incentive to do that? And, of course, we already know, right, we can't afford. We can't afford to save. Right? This is really where we're headed. We can't afford to save. The debt's too big. Could you imagine? You know what the debt would be if it, if we if the 10-year note was 7%? Do you know? Wouldn't be a trillion. Wouldn't be two trillion. Wouldn't be three trillion. It'd be almost four trillion. You can't afford that. Right? Hey, we gotta be like everybody else. Let's get to negative. The debts are so big that they're now trading for essentially nothing. What do you get to buy them? Nothing, next to nothing, nothing, or less than nothing. Right? And and we are starting to see it already in Europe. Large depositors, people that have large amounts of money in in their bank accounts, the bank now charges them just for putting the money in there. That's coming everywhere. 
You know, when you think about how they used to talk about, oh, gold, it was such a bad, it doesn't pay interest. Remember all the idiots that said that to you? A lot of you out there, that's the reason why you never bought gold. Well, my stock guy, my financial guy says gold doesn't pay interest. Guess what? Neither does your bank. What does that tell you? And that's probably a pretty good indication of what? Yeah, I shouldn't want to have put my money there. But this is what, again, makes gold so appealing. And then you think about the fact that pretty soon here, your most likely scenario is before the electronic money comes in, you will be charged for having your money in the bank. And, of course, right, the, what would be the reaction to that? For you to try to take it out, right? <laughs> right? They're not dumb. Hey, they're going to try to take it out. So we need to usher in the electronic money that forces everybody to what? Have it in. Because if it ain't in, you can't use it, right? And, and let's face it, if we have an electronic currency, we can force it to be in. This is what they're doing. It's so obvious. And I know, right, we get the headline here or the headline there, but just look at, at the big picture for one stinking second. Right? Does anybody tell you to buy bonds? Anybody? Right? Everyone's like, yeah, don't buy those. Right, of course, but, you know, you're over 55. That's what you're, you're supposed to do. How about the bank? When's the last time a bank pitched you a CD? Hey, buy a CD. Give me a hundred thousand, and I'll pay you seven percent. It's gone. Doesn't exist. Why? What's next? You think it stops there? See, it could. If we were running, you know, a budget deficit of, you know, a couple hundred billion. Maybe, right? Hey, maybe we can even have some pretend surpluses to give. Instead, we're shattering records without it even being a crisis. And World War III hasn't even started yet. Remember what I told you, be your own central bank. It's not how much you have, it's how much does it weigh. We'll be back. 800-951-0811. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. So now I've laid it out for you. This is what's coming. This isn't uh, a baby and if. This is what is next, and it's obvious because there's no other alternative. Now uh, Friday I told you I gave you numbers uh, for where I think bottoms are going to be. Uh, the strikes over the weekend. The bottoms are in. There you go. Right, you got silver at eighteen bucks, uh, gold's at uh, fifteen oh seven uh, right now. Bottoms are in. Let's talk about supply. A great, great interview occurred. This was on Friday, uh, talking about. Listen, the upside for gold is incredible. Uh, Jason, go ahead, just play the clip. This is uh, talking about gold mine supply. Will we hit a supply crunch soon of quality gold deposits? My guest now is Brent Cook of Exploration Insights. No stranger to the show. Welcome back, Mr. Brent Cook. Glad to see you again in Beaver Creek. Yeah, happy to see you. I feel like you're in your element here. You're outdoors. There's bears. There's you're bears? <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it here. I, we we drove, you know, I live in Utah. Yeah. We drove over here, took five yeah. days, and just fantastic scene. I love it here. Well, I was excited to catch up with you since, as you know, we've had an excellent summer in the precious metals. How has it changed life for you? I'm um, busier than I want to be. Right. Let's talk about the state of the sector. Uh, Brett, obviously, we're here at the Precious Metal Summit. It's just starting, uh, but what's the sentiment like? What are you hearing? There certainly is positive. There's a lot going on. Uh, this is, there's over a thousand people here. They've got tents everywhere set up for one-on-one -on -one meetings. There's private equity. There's it's lots huge. of corporates. Yeah. I mean, every, everybody's here, and it's positive. It's, you, I mean, you could really tell the difference between this year and last. I mean, 
it's like you said it's massive this year i mean you, you don't see it on camera but there's three huge tents the attendants the companies you know so it's really a sign of the times yeah and a lot of australians here this time so let's talk about my my, my intro i mentioned or questioned how many um, good gold deposits are still out there um, you're out there you're a geologist what what are you seeing tell us the scoop well there's an interesting discussion yesterday uh where they showed that reserves going out there are always dropping off you know 10 16 years out and the the story is that we you know we were going to run out of gold deposits that's not the case uh we are running out of and is economic deposits discovery of economic deposits there's no shortage of marginal deposits or sub economic deposits um and the question is will is the gold rising gold price going to fix all that or not. My thesis is that probably 80% of those are going to be marginal at any price because they've got a fundamental mm. flaw. So that's why Joe and I spend so much time out in the field looking at these early stage things to find that flaw. Well, let's talk about that. How often, um, well, you're on the field a lot, so how often do you see discrepancies on what's reported on a company's uh, paper versus what you're seeing in the field? A lot. Uh, discrepancies are just things you see you go out there I remember we went to look at one project uh, on paper they had a nice trench it was like 45 meters of two and a half grams looked really good the geology was right in Mexico but went there and look at it and this thing's in the bottom of a gorge on a river bend that floods every season and so there's that would never be a deposit I don't care how, how good it looks because it's in the wrong place there was quality gold there you can't get to it you could never make a mine out of it and then metallurgies yeah it's it's oh it's impossible but, but they're but what they're reporting well they're telling you what they're getting but until you get there and look at it you don't realize that this is an impossible place to build a mine so think about what he just said so here is probably the leading geology expert talking about deposits and saying hey there's no shortage of non-viable gold deposits he says there's they're everywhere but then he goes on and says these companies are taking these non-viable and non-viable means that hey what it would cost for me to get it out of the ground is more than what the spot price is, right? It's more than what gold trades for. And then, of course, you heard them say they're non-viable at any cost. But these companies still list those as reserves that, hey, we've got a mine, and it's got 10 million ounces of gold. We're never going to be able to mine it. But we can still put it on our balance sheet. And so he says, when you look at these miners, and they all project, he said, 16 years out, almost without exception, the numbers, the deposits that they say that they have are extremely overstated. And then, of course, he used uh, an example in Mexico where he said, man, the geology was great. Right, they took the core samples, and 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 the amount of gold per ton was outstanding. He goes, so we were excited when we got out there. We found it at the bottom of a gorge at a bend in the river that literally every single year floods. You can never mine it. You can never mine it and make any money at any at any price. And it's just fascinating. And she asked, I love the question that she asked, which was, hey, how many times do you find these discrepancies where they're saying, these companies are saying they got all these reserves, and you go out and you start looking at what they're claiming their reserves are and going, yeah, they can never buy that. His answer was, a lot. Yeah. 800-951-0592. It's okay to be a little early. If you're a little late, 
how much gold is really going to be available. Final segment coming up. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two U.S. twenty dollar liberties and saints at sixteen hundred dollars. Uh, rolls of U.S. silver eagles at four thirty five. The the best deal in silver are those rolls of dimes uh, at seventy dollars per roll. Eight hundred. Nine five one zero five nine two. As we've entered the next leg of the gold bull market, which really started in '01, uh, really started to gain momentum when we realized that Alan Greenspan was wrong and we weren't going to be able to pay off the debt and fix Social Security and Medicare, of course, and then the fa- financial crisis. Now we've got a really a bond market crisis. The bond market really in, just in flames with all these negative yields and no hope of paying off debt. And now uh, the foremost geologist in the world saying that the vast majority of reserves on the balance sheets of these miners are unminable at any price. So when you sit there and you think about gold exposure, owning mining stocks is not owning gold. Being in some index fund of mining stocks is not owning gold. Those are two different things. Hey, if you want to take a flyer on mining stocks, great. But understand, you know, my uncle always used to say, uh, you know, miners were nothing more than a hole in the ground with a liar standing uh, on top of it. And now you sit here and you listen. I'm not saying it. The, 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 listen to what the geologists are telling you. Hey, yeah, there are. there's tons of gold deposits. Unfortunately, most of them are unminable. And they're unminable, whether it's uh, from location to the quality to flooding to this, that, that, hey, you can never do it. Uh, It vastly overstates the amount of gold that's actually left in the ground that can be mined. Uh, And you sit here and you think about here we are in the next leg of this bull, this bull market in gold. And, and, you know, obviously everyone's making the easy call, right, 2,000, right? That's, that's kind of baked into the cake here. Uh, and, you know, and, and, you know, are we going to see 3,000 gold and maybe 4,000 gold, 5,000 gold? It's likely. And now you put a, a supply shortage on top of it and, and what it will cost for people. You know, I remember at $1,900 gold, $20 gold pieces were like twenty three and 2400 because – Everybody wanted it, and there just wasn't any out there, right? Uh, Gold Eagle, Silver Eagle production, you know what happens. The mint's out, and premiums just go through the roof and all of those things. Uh, Take advantage now when the premiums are low. I mean, you're buying $20 gold. It's not even $100 over spot. Take advantage of it, 800 951 592 and put them away, and let's hope that we don't have to use it. But really, the path is really clear. I don't know what's going to happen with this oil field. I don't know how long it's going to be out. I don't know if we're going to go to war with Iran. But you know what I do know? The debt isn't payable. The bond market makes absolutely no sense. They've destroyed our financial integrity. And next thing you know, they're going to destroy your bank accounts. And then they're going to give us the digital money. You watch and see. Patriot Radio News Hour. We'll be back tomorrow.